Morning, guys. I'm the Tech Prepper. Hope everybody's doing well, and I just want to give you guys a big thank you. Uh, you guys really are the best group of YouTube subscribers. I couldn't uh, hope for any better. So uh, keep the comments alive. I love all your comments, questions. Um, even when you guys occasionally challenge me, um, I'm fine with that too, most of the time, I think. All right, so today is uh, part three of the ArmorLock TPA-817B series. We're going to go into specs. And um, before we dive deep in weights, measurements, all that good stuff, I think it's really important to consider the design goals of the TPA-817B as the creator, Zeth, kind of envisioned for himself and for people that have an operating style like me. That's people that want to set up comms quickly and be able to have all of their connections uh, really within hand's reach without fumbling for connectors on the back of the radio. So we're going to start with how I like to run my kit. This is a camera bag from Hazard 4. I like it because it has a clasp on the front and makes the, the radio very easily accessible with all the controls. And uh, we're going to take all this stuff apart, but the other thing I like about this setup is that you notice that the bag actually cuts off right at the level where you still have access to get your fingers into the controls. And I think that really is key when selecting a bag for this. You don't want it to go up too high. In fact, I couldn't find a bag tall enough, so it just turned out to be a happy coincidence that it worked out that way. Um, so with that said, let's go ahead and pull this thing out. Disconnect the power, disconnect the mic, and I'm going to pull out the, uh, the digital cables first. And the reason why I wanted to show you guys the cables first is that this frame, the TPA pack frame, has a lot of really nice details. So if you take a look at this, the TPA pack frame stands straight up on its own. So as long as you have a bag that is stable enough, uh, this works incredibly well. And if you notice here on the side, I don't know if this is gonna come on camera, there's a notch at the bottom on each side of the frame. And what it allows you to do is essentially run some cable management through there. And uh, there's one on both sides. And let's go ahead and remove some of these cables here. All right, we'll get this cable mess out of the way. The other thing I like about the frame is that it offers lots of options for attachment points. As you can see, I'm running my power distribution and solar charge control. This is the Buddy Pole Power Mini. I found this uh, elastic strap a long time back in some packaging material. Uh, so I don't know where you would get this, but it's working out really well to cinch down the, um, the Buddy Pole Power Mini. But I assume Velcro straps or even a large, very large rubber band would work as well. So let's remove this too. All right, so let's talk about some of the other features I really like about this pack frame. Uh, like I said, it has been very thoughtfully designed. Starting at the top, you'll notice that it has cutouts so that you could still access the controls. And more importantly, you could still get your fingers in here to remove the uh, BNC connector on the front. On the other side, you're also able to easily get your fingers in there if you need to be able to access the power button, uh, the volume, RF gain, uh, squelch, and things of that nature. So little details like that I'm really quite impressed about. But for me, the biggest thing about this kit are the relocation mounts. And you have a lot of options in terms of how you mount this. Uh, I prefer to put mine on the top facing side with uh, the BNC connectors on the front. Um, I'm actually running a uh, TNC bulkhead here because I do run a whip antenna, uh, but I do have a conversion to go uh, to BNC if needed. The uh, other thing I like about this compared to some of the other rails that are on the market, uh, before this I was running the portable zero rails, is you have the frame extend well past the connection points on the bottom. So you do have quite a bit of protection. So you notice here, 
um, just like before, I'm able to access and get my fingers here to use the uh, thumb knurling here to remove the coax cable. But even with this uh, elbow connector, it is fully protected. Even the cables I had coming out of the back for the six pin mini DIN um, and all of those connections, they were fully protected even though they are, they are about an inch or so plus in length. And I'm running the aftermarket uh, Anderson power pole conversion for the DC uh, distribution. And I just made myself a small pigtail. And as you can see, there's plenty of uh, areas that are cut out in the frame to allow you to run the cable management however you like. So let me take a quick look at my notes. So I did miss a few things. So as I mentioned before, this frame pack has been very thoughtfully designed. As you can see, you still have full access to the battery compartment on the back. Um, everywhere you see these slotted frames is an opportunity to mount your relocation brackets uh, wherever you like. And they're just using standard, uh, I think it's T-nut uh, M-lock connectors. So you can actually cant these in whatever direction you want, um, anywhere uh, basically along the frame. Um, I'm running only two right now for the BNC. Uh, we'll talk about some of the other options. But um, since the Yaesu FT8 uh, 17818 does not have a kickstand, uh, Zeth, the creator of this frame, uh, mentioned that you can use the other pieces to relocate them at the bottom and you essentially end up with a couple of feet. So really cool uh, design consideration, very, very thoughtfully designed. Um, on the side here, you have full access to uh, the RJ45 connector for the mic and all of the other uh, controls here as well. So in my opinion, the frame really doesn't get in the way. Uh, the only hard part that you have to get used to, uh, especially if you have a little bit uh, fatter fingers like I do, is accessing uh, the mode. But uh, I pretty much now can uh, work that without any issues after a little bit of getting used to the overall frame. So let's talk about what the... Uh, what you get with the TPA 817B. And I'll note there's also one for the 857D and one for the 891. And I actually have the 891 sitting here. Uh, so there'll be a video on that at some point. So you do not receive with this kit the, the cables. So these uh, patch leads here that I have, these do not come with it. You need to supply your own. Um, I found these on Amazon and I'm pretty happy with them. So if you want to support the channel, I'll put a link down below where you can get the BNC uh, patch cables, but bring your own cables. Uh, it's fully up to you. But what you get with the base model essentially is the two frames. You get the, on the 817B, you, you also get the uh, relocation mounts. You get two of these with the BNC bulkheads. And uh, I think that's critical in really getting the correct and full experience from this rig. Uh, there are a couple of extra uh, packages you can get if you want. Uh, the first one is called the um, digital uh, package, I believe, and it has the six pin mini DIN. This one does come with the cable and the relocation mount. There is a third package and it, it's for CW and it allows you to uh, basically relocate the keyer to the front or wherever you want to relocate it to. And it comes with relocation bracket, the bulkhead connector, and I can't recall if it comes with a cable or not, uh, but I'll put a link below with a, with a correction there. So those are the three packages. You get the frame with the two relocation kits with the bulkhead connectors for BNC as one option or as the main base package. You get the uh, secondary uh, optional package, which is the, uh, the digital uh, package. And then the last one is the CW package. All right, so let's start by taking some rough measurements and some weights. Actually, I'm not going to be able to read this upside down. Zeth does have the weight for the pack frame on his uh, website. But let's take some measurements. I think that's the more important piece, especially if you're looking to find a bag. So for me, the actual height looks to be about nine and three quarter inches. The width is five and a half inches. And I'm gonna measure this at the widest depth. Now, 
the frame does not come at hard 90 degree angles. Uh, I think they break at about 93 angles. Um, and that's designed for a few reasons. Uh, one, it allows you to access the controls, but it's also a um, engineering uh, issue as I understand it. Um, so let me go ahead and measure the widest portion here. And just to be sh safe, we're just shy of two and a half inches in terms of the area from this portion to this portion. So guys, um, this has been an absolute game changer for me. Um, there were some con concerns about heat. And as you can see, there's plenty of venting down here. So even in a bag, um, you do get some airflow if you tend to operate much longer uh, durations than I do. Uh, you saw how quickly it was for me to pull this out of the pack. And then, especially if you have a couple of the relocation mounts on the bottom, you would actually have a nice little presentation like this and have all the access to your controls and your keyer if you go with the uh, CW package, your digital on the front, and your BNC connectors. So before we move on, actually there's not much left to the video. Oh, and I forgot to mention, these were sent to me for free, so please take this entire review um, and my opinions with a grain of salt. But I personally love this. Uh, you're going to see lots more of this on um, all the videos, kind of just doing its thing in the background. With that said, Zeth also sent me the FT891. So just as a comparison, we can see how tall this is going to be. So I'm still on the hunt for the perfect bag. Um, I'll let you guys know when I find something. We'll do a full kind of field uh, review with this. But it's quite a bit uh, taller. This one actually is coming in at 12 and 3 quarter inches uh, in height. And then in terms of its maximum depth, we're looking at uh, just shy of 3 inches. It's a little bit more than 2 and 3 quarter inches. Uh, and since I don't have the radio, I can't give you uh, the width right now. I'll connect these this weekend to the FT891 and start posting some of that stuff on Instagram and Twitter. But these feel pretty light. In fact, since I have these, let's weigh just the rails for the, or just the frames for the FT891. But in general, I'm very happy with engineering quality, very happy with the thoughtful design, the myriad of relocation options for the mounting hardware, for the relocation kits. So uh, the other thing I would say, guys, is that uh, Zeth is a, has a full-time job. This is um, uh, kind of a fun hobby for him. He, he, he really enjoyed engineering this and providing this for the ham radio community. And uh, he's got a few more projects up his sleeves. I can't talk about them yet uh, for potentially some other radios in the future. But uh, if you want to support some American-made uh, ham radio equipment and an excellent ham, in my opinion, uh, give ArmorLock a try. Take a look at the website. There's a model, again, for the 817, 818. There's a model for the 857D and also one for the 891 and obviously these other frames. All right, guys, um, I don't typically do review videos like this. I prefer to be in the field and experiment and do all that good stuff. But um, I did my best to kind of give you an honest walkthrough of the TPA pack frames from ArmorLock. I'm the Tech Prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared. QSL, sorry for the bad copy. Whiskey 9, Mike, Romeo, Hotel. 5959 into New River, Arizona. QSL, QSL, uh, have fun with the activation. Uh, 7-3 for now.